I worked for a travel agency a long time ago, and I sold Corcovado trips. I told my boss that I should go and visit this park that I was selling. I couldn't sell a destination if I didn't know what it was like. I had travelled all over the world. I'd seen lots of places, but I fell in love with it. So I said to my boss that I wanted to come and work here. It's always been my goal and my dream to have my own hotel where you live with nature. Journey to the southwestern corner of the country. Golfo Dolce is a calm inlet of the Pacific Ocean. Many sea mammals come here to breed. Because there are no tides, the humid tropical forest reaches right down to the calm waters of the Gulf. As it's very wild, it's an ideal location for nature conservation programs. Only accessible by boat, the Casa de Orquidas, the Orchid House. This is a collection of plants selected from the 12,000 plant species identified in Costa Rica. This tree is called the anchota. This red part is the fruit. We can open it. Look here. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah. The Indians used it to make body paint. Today it's used as food coloring. For example, in rice or meat. Okay. That is? Next to the botanical garden, Zoo Ave. This foundation for the restoration of nature is piloting a reintroduction project for the scarlet macaw. The scarlet macaw has suffered because of intense poaching for the pet industry and the trade in feathers. Raoul Fournier Zepada is in charge of the reintroduction center. The aim of this project is to breed animals that are endangered in order to repopulate the areas where they originate from. That's what we're doing with the scarlet macaw. 
The macaws we use for breeding come from seizures by the Minaya, the Ministry of Environment, and also from individual donations from people who realize that it's not right to keep these animals as pets. They give them to us and we use them for breeding. We reduce the amount of food we give them so that the macaws learn to live independently. We've observed that some birds now live 30 kilometers away and they don't come back here anymore. On the way to the Pacific coast, the light aircraft flies over a mangrove area. It's a forest that gets flooded by the tides, a breeding ground for fish. It's also the kingdom of reptiles, crocodiles and caimans. The Corcovado Park protects this biotype, which plays an important role in the ecological balance and thus preserves the last great tropical forest in Central America. Jean-Jacques Gozard, our ornithologist, is always keen to add to his observations, and he lands on the airstrip at the Serena Ranger Station on the coast at the edge of the park. The park borders a deserted beach 46 kilometers long where turtles come to lay their eggs. The Luna Lodge overlooks the Pacific coast. It's a starting point for treks into the Corcovado Park. Hi there. Hola. Uh, well, how are you? Well, anything special? Yes. I saw a turquoise cotinga. Beautiful. So, your lodge is open. Have you got lots of clients, lots of bookings? Yes. Everything's looking good. Lana Wedmore has worked in many professions. Skiing instructor in Colorado, sailing teacher in Australia, tour guide and travel agent she finally settled in Costa Rica. I worked for a travel agency a long time ago and I sold Corcovado trips. I told my boss that I should go and visit this park that I was selling. I couldn't sell a destination if I didn't know what it was like. I had traveled all over the world. I'd seen lots of places, but I fell in love with it. So I said to my boss that I wanted to come and work here. It's always been my goal and my dream to have my own hotel where you live with nature. We're 300 meters above sea level. We're on a plateau next to the Corcovado, in a reserve surrounded by mountains. It's incredible. You live in harmony with nature, and that's what people find here.
the pride of Costa Rica, the Corcovado Park has applied for World Heritage Site status. Costa Rica started its green revolution 40 years ago and today is considered as one of the undisputed models for environmental protection. This is a red-eyed tree frog, Achelychnus calidrius. It's a nocturnal frog, so I've just woken it up. It's nocturnal, tree-dwelling, of course. It doesn't live very high up, but often in heliconias. It's an emblem of the country, of Costa Rica. You find it on all the T-shirts, the postcards, but it's also an emblem, along with its fellow amphibians, as an indicator of the health of the ecosystems, particularly the water. We have pure nature in Costa Rica. I'd better put it back where it belongs before it gets dehydrated. 